Now that we've uh, finished looking at latched sequencing, which is the easiest to write, because it's real easy just to lay out the permissives for what completes the step. The difficulty with latched, the logic that we just finished, is that then you have to go back and unlatch everything. Whereas sealing logic, although it behaves basically the same, everything that turns that output on or off is in one rung. It's much easier to troubleshoot and follow, but it is more difficult to write. You have to be a little bit more clever with your logic. You can see already that this logic is more difficult to write. It's a little bit more complicated. Also, you have other things to deal with. With latches, as you learned in the basics manual, when you cycle power, whatever bits were latched on are still going to be latched and unless you have special code that goes in, does a little housekeeping, a one time only with that special first scan bit that you learned about earlier, goes in, unlatches everything to give it a fresh start. Now normally the reason that, that you want to clear everything if the ma machine has been turned off, in other words if the control has actually been out of the run mode, whether it just went into the program mode or you actually cycled power, the controller has no idea what took place while it was gone. So people could have reached in and moved things around, pulled cylinders out, pushed them in, moved parts around. You don't want the machine to come back up and start running again. So when you cycle power, you definitely want to, in some cases, in most cases, when you power back up, you want to rinse the machine or you want to reset everything back to zero and make the operator go through and clear everything out before he starts up again. So in this little lab right here, after you went to all this work to convert it, what happens when you stop the cycle, push the stop cycle push button up there, that did not happen with the latch sequencer? All of the step complete bits dropped out because they were set to one every true scan of each rung the false execution of an OTE instruction writes a zero to the memory location on each false scan of each rung. If these were latches, even if the rungs are false because there's no false execution, they're going to stay in their last state. That can work to your advantage or your disadvantage. Okay, we did a little uh, extra logic here using the move instruction to capture the bit pattern for the steps complete on every single program scan. So we move B30 into B33 every single program scan. Now for this bit capture logic to be accurate, do you think it would matter where in the program the rung was located? Yes. Why? You would want the capture you would want to capture the bit pattern after the last complete scan, not somewhere in the middle of the execution of logic. In other words, if you captured it halfway through the logic, well, you may have changed a bit, you may not have, but you it doesn't represent a complete program scan. So you always want to put it at, right at the end. Now, how could you put the sequencer back to the same image after a power cycle? Well, we had you add some more um, logic shown in step six here, rung seven, and we had to use the first pass bit. Remember, S colon 115 or S2 colon 1 slash 15 is a special bit that goes true or high one for one program scan anytime you go into the run mode, whether it's from the program mode or power off up into run, S115 goes true for one scan and one only. So on the very first pass through, it's going to move B33 into B30, but not again until you've cycled power, cycled the logic. Okay, so we had you reset your sequence step to step two, cycle power, go online, put the process in the program mode from the online toolbar. 
we had you go in in the program mode that way um, you could watch a little bit more closely so if you look you can see uh, that the bit pattern B33 matches what you had when you went off by looking at the bit pattern in B33 can you conclude what step was the last step completed yep step number two although I did show you how to reset the sequence back to the same image of steps complete before the power cycle or before the program run cycle that may not be a good idea to make it more deterministic on the operators part instead you may want to change that permissive to a panel view restart or a MMI restart touchy in other words you have to touch something on the screen to say to go ahead and restart it in the sequence exactly where it was at because you you really don't know what went on in that machine while the uh, controller was out of contact with the machine and doesn't see what the sensors were doing so it might be better to do it this way then after the operator if they decide they want to start right where they were at because in other words it just stopped for a, a moment nothing moved they want to go right back to where they were at then they could do a panel view restart or a sequence um, continue if you want to say and then they have to hit a start button or they hit reset which clears all of this and then they start from scratch so toggle B310 on while still in the program mode now while observing the registers in the move instruction in rung 8 change the mode of the processor to the run mode did the sequence return to the state it was in prior to the power cycle yes it did does it matter where in the program that this rung is located I say no because the amount of time that would lapse between when the operator made his selection and when the operator restarts the machine would include many complete program scans if not hundreds